It's a lockdown like no other. The Rygate and Banstead Women's Aid Refuge, by definition a place of safety, but home to nine women and 14 children in the time of COVID-19, anxiety levels are high. But rainbow women who've escaped one danger fear a new one. It's just scary. We don't know what, how, how things will go if one of us does get it. And it is terrifying. Come on, boys. Can, if you, can you go in the room? While the rest of us can keep our doors locked, well even now, staff are urgently preparing for new arrivals. That's really important to get somebody in as quickly as possible. Since the start of lockdown, calls to the National Domestic Abuse Helpline have risen by 50%. OK, is it a refuge space for yourself? Lovely. And which area are you fleeing from? So where is it unsafe for you to be? Refuge manager Emma is inundated. I'm so sorry, I have done a search and there's only 10 miles between where the refuge is and where you are and you need to be 25 miles away from us um, for safety reasons. Oh, having to tell someone that, you know, you can hear the desperation in her voice, she is desperate to get out, she is looking for a space. She's sought help and we're just not able to help her, it's just really difficult. The first three weeks of lockdown saw the largest number of killings of women over any 21-day period in the last decade. For us, it's about weighing up the difference of do we risk bringing COVID-19 into the house, which could have its own problems and would have its own problems, or do we save a life of a woman that could be at risk of being murdered? And that will always outweigh it. Is Ethically, morally, this is why we're in this job, to save lives, and that is what we've got to do. Helen has just travelled hundreds of miles, fleeing her abusive partner. <gasps> Who's this? So desperate to escape, she left home with just a bag and her baby. She's met by support worker Sophie. This is a panic alarm. I've never had to use it. Don't want to use it, but it's there for you if you need to. Whilst you're here, we'll get you to change your number. I've lost all of his family members. Well done. If you ever think you're being followed or anything like that, get yourself in a shop where you're safe. Don't come back here. Get yourself in a shop and call the police that way. Have you got any questions you need to you want to ask me? Probably lots, but none at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to take everything and call in. Yeah. I'll send that in shot. <laughs> Keep crying. Of course you will. It is, you just, it's that shock of being in that situation. Yeah. You don't think that would happen. It's a really big decision and it's a really brave decision to do it, but you know it was the right yeah. one. You look cheeky. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be all right. Should we go and get your stuff from, from the car? This yeah, it with me. Worse, it? Everyone does, and it, that's why we try and make it as nice as possible because yeah. we want you to be happy and you want you to stay. The residents at the refuge can mix as they count as one family, but staff are supposed to observe social distancing. It's difficult when there are young children and a new playmate has just arrived. Are you saying hello? What have you got? Have you got a crisp? Are you sharing? <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you two, can you go in your room? Well done. Already an average of 60% of women are turned away because there's not enough space in refuges. The pandemic has created a potentially dangerous log jam. Women ready to move on are stuck, knowing others who need the space desperately may be turned away. I was ready to go. Like, Phoebe, who escaped her violent ex-partner several months ago, is one of the many women in limbo. There's probably people out there that are in serious trouble and they do really need the support and the safety and they can't get here because I'm still in the room. Uh, yeah, I was just, it wasn't, I wasn't right when I first got here. It was, I was very scared. And being here now, is, I just feel, I feel confident again. I feel like, like I can do this, I can move on, and I can start a new life for me and my daughter. Go on, Emma, be brave. Go. Run. Don't even think of it. Meanwhile, calls to the refuge never stop. 
Okay. Is she safe to talk? And there are many the refuge is unable to help. What I would advise is to go back to the domestic abuse helpline, give them a call, and I really hope that you're able to find something soon. Two bags of clothes, shall I do the door? Helen is one of the lucky ones to get a room, though luck, perhaps, a strange concept here. When you get here, you just think, actually, it's all these normal people just having a bit of a bad time. It's like really stressing them to tell her that. I know you are. normal, but I'm just like, ah. I know. So I'll probably try and come in a bit, um, yeah. even tomorrow or something. Oh. All right? Thank you. Okay, no problem. See you in a bit. Bye. She's left what was obviously a very serious and dangerous situation. And she's put, put her child and herself first. <laughs> you all right? The refuge chief executive, Charlotte, is like many of the staff, a survivor of domestic violence herself. She knows too well what it is like for the countless women trapped in lockdown right now with their abuser. There was a period of time where um, I was essentially kept hostage for a couple of weeks and um, it was probably one of the worst times of my life and this current situation for whatever reason, is just bringing all of that back up. What's this? She also knows a space in a refuge can be life-saving. For her, this is personal. Before COVID-19, there was already a drastic shortage of beds. What is it going to take? How many murders is it going to take for somebody to, in government to say, we need to deal with this? The government say they've announced a £28 million package to help survivors of domestic abuse and their children and promise to improve their access to housing services. The, you know, they'll support us to get extra accommodation, so that's a great move. I In her area, at point. least, Charlotte makes progress. She's managed to persuade her local council, Surrey, to fund 15 extra refuge spaces. But as the lockdown continues and demand for help grows, it will take more than a handful of extra beds to make sure every victim of domestic violence has somewhere safe to go. Tonight, the government have told us that they've launched a public awareness campaign called Hashtag You Are Not Alone to highlight that anyone at risk is still able to leave and seek refuge. They say they are giving up to £2 million to enhance online support and helpline services so anyone who needs help and support can access it. Well, I'm joined now by Charlotte Neer, who runs the refuge we saw in that film, and by the government's domestic abuse commissioner, Nicole Jacobs. Charlotte Neer, if I can begin with you, you know from bitter, terrible experience what it's like to be trapped in your own home with your abuser. Give us a sense of what women are going through right now. Jackie, it's just too horrific to even, for most people, to even consider what this would be like. You're constantly monitored, you're constantly in fear, you're constantly trying to keep everything running smoothly so the abuser doesn't kick off. Um, and it is just a 24-7 intolerable nightmare. And I can remember a time when I literally was thinking, as I went to sleep, am I going to wake up to see the next day? And this is what these women are going through right now. And I just feel so, so devastated for them. And frustratingly, watching that film really you know people need to understand that that this costs the economy approximately 66 billion pounds a year and i'm pleased to hear boris is um hosting a summit next week because maybe that's the kind of language that he'll understand 66 billion versus 76 million and actually that we've been given and when i say we actually refugees have only been given 10 million pounds to address this issue now, Charlotte, and this just, is against the back. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt you very briefly. I mean, the government did move quickly. In early April, the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, announced this extra funding for domestic abuse helplines. She also said, where a victim and her children do need to leave, we will ensure they have a place to go. Is that true? No. That is categorically not true. Six out of ten of every woman that need a refuge space cannot get a refuge space. And I can tell you, and my team can tell you, you saw it on the film, the amount of women that we're having to turn down 
the amount of women that are just so utterly desperate and having to be in that position to say, no, sorry, that space has already been filled and you can't come here and I'll send you back to the domestic abuse helpline, but there may not be a space there. It's just a position that nobody should ever be in. Nicole Jacobs, are you in any doubt that women are being failed, that women are in danger at this moment? I'm, I'm in no doubt that um, what we just saw in that report will be happening all over the country. Um, and we need to do more and do everything we can it, particularly during this time to make sure that services like Charlotte's are getting the support they need. Um, and there's a lot in, in your report about what she's done um, that we should be emulating. In other, you know, if, if 15 bed spaces were identified in every local authority area, we would, we would be a long way towards where we need to be in terms of the volume that we're expecting. People are seeking help very quietly online. They're, they're accessing our national helplines and web chats. And people are planning um, to try to get to the support that they need, whether it's a refuge or a community-based support. But and we've got to now do everything we can to make sure those services have what they need to, to really take on that surge in demand. And the thing is, you'll know that successive governments have made big promises about domestic abuse. Theresa May said more than two years ago, it's critical. People with violent partners have somewhere to go. Why is that still not happening? You know, part of the reason why I was appointed was that we have a postcode lottery in relation to domestic abuse. I don't want anyone listening who's experiencing abuse to, to wonder if there are services out there. Absolutely, always feel free to call. Those services are there. But what we need, um, what government is learning um, time and time again, unfortunately, is that our services are not, they're not funded in a sustainable way. And we are seeing the cracks in, in our foundations of these services in COVID. And we've got to address this once and for all. We have a DA bill um, that's in the Commons now that could address this. And we need to go can further in that bill to make sure we're learning our lessons. Can I put it briefly to both of you, Charlotte first, this summit next week, what would you say to the Prime Minister? I would say there's no point throwing short-term pots of money at this solution. There needs to be a sustainable plan which creates capacity, not just in refuge services, but in community-based services. And that plan needs to be sustainably funded. But there is little point at just chucking small amounts of money at this. Because, for instance, with this latest fund, it all that's going to do is fill the holes that services that were already on their knees need for sustainability. It's not going to increase capacity, Nicole, which is what we... Nicole Jacobs, just bring, uh, bringing you in very briefly then, what, what will you be saying to government? Um, a, a lot of what Charlotte just said, um, but also that we need to build back better. We're learning in this, so many things and we're seeing a lot of innovation um, that we need to make sure that we thank learn you. into the future. Sorry to interrupt you but thanks both of you for joining us and if you are a victim of domestic abuse and want to find organisations which can support you you can go to the Channel 4 website at channel4.com support.